Hello, good morning, St. Martin. I am Jason Rogers, the chairman of the Central Voting Bureau, and together with my four colleagues, we formed the Central Voting Bureau of St. Martin. My colleagues are Tamara Richardson, she's the vice chair. We have Cindy Marica, she's a member. We have Anastasia Baker, he's also a member. And we have Mercedes James, she's also a member. Together, we are appointed by the, um, the governor of St. Martin and the government of St. Martin, actually. And we are to oversee the uh, smooth, transparent, open, fair elections. Now, we do, what we're doing today is postulation day. As per Article 22 and 23 of the election ordinance, all political parties that are registered at the Electoral Council are allowed to submit their list of candidates to us between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. What we have done in order to ensure that everything uh, flows in an orderly manner and transparent manner is that we have provided time slots to each and every political party that would like to contest this election in order to indicate what time they would like to submit your list of candidates. Now, after they would have submitted your list of candidates, we will then have to examine those lists of candidates with the underlying documents, the supporting documents, if there are any defaults that need to be remedied, we will ensure to notify them on, on November the 26th, which is Tuesday, and we will then give them the opportunity in order to remedy those defaults within a period of three days. Once they have remedied those defaults, on December 2nd, we will hold a public meeting whereby we will decide upon the validity of the list. Once we have declared the list valid, then those lists would be allowed to contend in the election for 2020, which are slated on January 9th. Those are the lists with the candidates that will be printed on the ballot as well. At this point, I would like to call either the representative at the Central Voting Bureau to, of the PFP, Ms. Melissa Gums, or the deputy representative, Mr. Marvia uh, Cooks, whichever one of you will be delivering the list. And if you would like to give a speech, feel free to do so, and you may do so over there in the, not the tribune, but where the parliamentarians usually sit, because this is the seat, one of the seats, or probably all 15 seats that you'll be vying for. So we have noted, Ms. Gums, that you, on behalf of your party, uh, the PFB, Party for Progress, you have submitted a list of candidates of uh, eight candidates, along with the uh, instemmings for clouding, and we always also see the, uh, the Model 4. We will peruse the list uh, more and more so, and also in depth. And um, as per the legislation, we will have to inform you. We will be doing so. We're doing an examination of the list on Monday, the 25th of November. And as per the law is prescribed, the following day we will immediately inform you what our decision is, not the decision, but what we have noticed during the examination. If there are any defaults that need to be remedied, we will surely let you, so, uh, let you know. Today, we submit this slate for the Party for Progress, the second step on a journey towards a mission that will not end on January 9, 2020. It has been an incredible two months of executing the plan that we outlined at our launch of engaging with the people of and key institutions within the community. At our launch event, and at every event since, we have mentioned that any person who asks the people for their vote must have the political will to take the sometimes difficult decisions for the best interests of the country. During the last few weeks, many have and will continue to say that they will try or have been trying to work to fix the issues facing us all. To that we say do or do not, there is no try. Not if you have the political will to bring about true growth for all of St. Martin's people. The time has come for us to stop operating from, a fear, from fear of reprisal or repercussions, afraid to speak up when we see what we know is wrong being done. It will not be simple, but it is necessary. And it will not come from those who have begun echoing principles they just learned about two months ago. Thank you to the Central Voting Bureau for your guidance and communication to this point and beyond. We deeply appreciate it as a first-time party. Thank you to our families and friends 
who have sustained and have lifted us this far and will continue to do so as they travel this road with us. And finally, thank you to those in Martinez who may or may not know us, but have taken the time to stop us in the streets, speak to us, and encourage us in the week since our launch. We are humbled by your kind words and excited to continue to meet you in your community during this campaign time and thereafter. Thank you again and see you soon. Madam Prime Minister, Mr. Priest, you may take a seat over there. If you wish to address your constituents or St. Martin, you can do so by means of a speech while we uh, briefly examine the list that you have just submitted to us. Good morning to the chairman as well as the members of the Central, Central Voting Bureau. Good morning to the members of parliament and ministers of the National Alliance. Good morning to the 23 candidates in total, including myself, of the National Alliance, and to all the family, friends, and supporters that have joined us here today to hand in this most esteemed list, the winning list of the National Alliance. It is a blessed morning that I am proud to stand here as the Prime Minister of St. Martin and also say a blessed good morning to all the people of St. Martin following this broadcast. We did not ask for this election, did we? No. We simply wanted good governance. Right. We simply wanted transparency. We simply wanted that a government would answer to Parliament yes. and that the people would come first. Right. As members of Parliament, together with several others, we saw since March of this year that there was a disarray in Parliament as well as government. The fiasco that ensued was not of the making of the National Alliance. Fingers have been pointed, but who know, know, and who didn't know, will know. As a National Alliance, we have always stood for integrity. We have always stood for good governance. We have worked hard, whether in government or in Parliament to ensure that especially the most vulnerable people of St. Martin were taken care of. When they unceremoniously kicked us out after the devastation of hurricanes, when they admitted whoever was sitting there would have had the same problem, they still found an opportune moment to grab power. And that's why we are where we are today. Had the National Alliance-led government of 2016 to 2020 still been in power, we would not be where we are today. Yeah. Instability would not be. Yeah. Instability would not be the order of the day. When you talk about instability, do you hear the word national alliance? No. Never. No. We are the most stable party in St. Martin. Yeah. We are the party of the people, have always been about the people. And while some may say we are the oldest party, we are proud of that. You know why? Because though we are the oldest party, it's the only party where the leader at the time and one of the main founders, Mr. William Marlin, now chairman of parliament, saw it, saw it fit to bring on young, innovative, intelligent, candidates of the people from back in the days. And I started in 2010, and he saw leadership in me. He didn't wait for no coup. He didn't wait for no uproar. 
he passed the mantle, and the people showed it by their votes. Amen. The people showed it by their votes. So while we were left out of the formation of the 2018-2022 government, we didn't cry, we didn't run and hide. We sat in these benches and defended the people of St. Martin to the best of our ability. And when after two weeks that their support had been pulled, which they don't want to admit that their government fell then, but hey, who no no, it falls since March. The people know. The people know. We waited the two weeks because the governor said, with his statement, he is still willing, Mr. Myers that is, to form a new coalition with his <coughs> former coalition, which contradiction in terms to me, but hey, vraie mandat, they say. Vote your conscience here in Parliament. We vote our conscience here in Parliament. And together we decided the instability could not continue. We saw ministers fighting each other in press briefing. We saw contradictory in turn. Could this continue for this country to rebuild? No. 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 And that is why, together with independent members and the USP party, we came together for St. Martin once again. We are a together team, the coalition of nine. And you will see that several others are now voting along <coughs> with the coalition of nine. That should tell you something. That should tell you something. We have a National Alliance-led parliament, and we have a National Alliance-led government. And with this list, and you could go up and down this list from 1 to 23 and back again. Trust me, it was difficult. And the number on the list does not denote the value of our candidates. Number 1 and number 23, number 2 and 22, all are as important as the other because we appeal to the entire community. We have experience in our former MPs, current MPs, and even me newish, but still have some experience, thank God. And we have youth. We have innovation. We have grassroots. We appeal to the total population, the eclectic population of St. Martin, and no one can say different. We are for progress. We are a Christian party before anybody else could put Christian in their names, based on the democratic Christian principles, which we don't have to wear as a brand, but that is what we are as St. Martin people. We believe that we have what it takes, and we will do it when January 9th comes. We ask the people for your continued support to keep this team of hope, this team of light, and this team of power in power when January 9th rolls around. Prime Minister, thank you very much for your address. At this point, I would like to invite you and uh, Mr. Priest to uh, collect your proof that you have submitted your list of candidates. We have noted it is a list of 23 candidates. Um, tomorrow is uh, endorsement day, as I've uh, informed the previous party before you, and I've informed the rest of St. Martin as well. Endorsement is from 9 to 4. However, the parties that are exempted are parties that have currently one or more seats in the Parliament of St. Martin. As such, the National Alliance is exempted from the endorsement tomorrow. You will, however, receive notification from us. We will be um, examining the list, all list of all political parties on Monday upcoming. And on Tuesday, you will receive notification from us if the lists are in order, if any documents are missing, and you will then have a period of three days to remedy if that is the case. But you will receive notification from us. And at this point, I would like to ask you if you can, uh, yes, sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would just ask your indulgence for one more word. At the end of my speech, I was a bit emotional, but I did not say thank you. Thank you to your esteemed committee, which came back after they rectified the LBA. And I would like to continue to pledge my support to your team to be able to execute the elections in a fair and just manner. You have my word.
may actually sit over there if you wish to. And while we shortly or uh, briefly examine the package that you are submitting to us, I see that the uh, leader of the UP, Mr. Bryson, if you wish to deliver a speech to your constituents and to say, Mark, you may now do so. Thank you very much, Mr. Rogers. A good afternoon to you and your honored colleagues of the Maine Voting Bureau. A good afternoon to all the supporters and the people of the UP, our candidates to board, and everyone here who has come out to be a part of this very important occasion, I think, for St. Martin and for all the people who have stood by what we have been able to do in Parliament. Um, I believe that the UP party and what we stand for, standing up for our people, standing up for the needs that we really want to have addressed in a real way in St. Martin. We have had many people that have approached us and have been speaking to my candidates. And all of these candidates on this list have one thing in common, a really burning passion to serve their country. We see this as an opportunity to go out there to our people and actually understand the real needs not just what we see on social media, not just what we see in the newspaper, but let's understand what the people actually want. St. Martin is one of the most special places in the world. And for me, I can't imagine loving a place more than I love this island. And that message of love and compassion and hard work for our people needs to be brought back to the constituents. I say here today to my candidates joining us in this journey with the UP Party, I say that continue that resolve that you have burning in you to represent and work for our country. Above all, that is who you are here for. You are here not just to represent the UP party, but you are already taking the path to be representatives of the people in this honorable hall and as a whole in our country. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to thank everyone so much for the opportunity. I would be remiss to not thank the opportunity given to me by the board of the UP, as well as the founder of the party, Theodore Heiliger, a visionary who has really groomed this party to be what it is today, and someone that I hold in very high regards. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you, Maine Voting Bureau. I hope you accept our credentials and lists here today so that we can go out to the work of the people. Thank you. Thank you very much. What we will do, as we have uh, indicated to the uh, previous parties before you that have submitted lists, is that we will be examining the packages that you uh, that have been submitted to us today, and that will be done on Monday, and you will be receiving a notification for us on Tuesday, the 26th, because the law prescribes it has to be the day after. So you will be receiving notification from us if there are any um, defaults. Um, in the package that have been submitted. And if there are, you will be receiving the, a maximum of three days in order to remedy those defaults. If there aren't, you will also receive notification from us as well that there are no defaults. Um, at this point, I would like to ask you, uh, Ms. Ashley asked Ms. Illich to come forward for the proof that she submitted the list of candidates. It has so now been recorded that the UP party has submitted a list of candidates at 1226 with a list of 23 candidates. You're submitting the list of candidates for the PPA. Yes, I am honored okay. to submit the winning list of PPA. So let me begin with best model two. Yes, sir. You see, you're submitting a list of 15 candidates. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then this is the model three of all the 15 candidates. Yeah. And this is mother four. Mother four. Okay. So 
and then I believe Congo, the most important part I'm forgetting. The picture <laughs> okay. of our party leader. The real okay. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, thank you very much. You may take a seat over there. And um, are you going to be addressing us or, or Ms. Arundel? Okay, Ms. Arundel, you can take a seat over there. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to the members of the Main Voting Bureau. Good afternoon to the radio listeners, TV viewers, our candidates, support, your friends and family. Thank you very much to our deputy board member and treasurer and advisor, Mr. Ed Gums, for doing the honor for us today to submit the list of the People's Progressive Alliance. We are on two minds here. One, we are here because elections were called in the midst of what should be festivities for the people of St. Martin. But instead, we are all encumbered with asking the good citizens of this country to come out once again and give us their support. The PPA is participating in these elections. We hope to secure the 136 signatures tomorrow from the electorate because it is very, very important for the public to understand that we cannot continue going through these processes. The patience of our people are being taxed. Our people are suffering mentally, socially, and structurally. Our constitution is very clear. We, the 50 members who will be elected to sit in this house of the people, we, the people, deserve good, strong, stable, reliable representation. This is not a popularity contest. This is not who can give you what more than the next. This is about capturing the hearts and the minds of the people of St. Martin. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm on these two minds, because it is very difficult to ask people to give you that trust and give you that vote again, when you know, when we know that we, the PPA party, the People's Progressive Alliance, who has not been in office for five years, the people of St. Martin who went through a devastating hurricane, the pensioners, the kids, meaning schools, the, the, the handicapped, the elderly, our environment, our infrastructure, our airport, our harbor, is suffering. And for five, six years, because I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. Yes, we started out ten, almost 10 years ago. January 9th, 2020, is an opportunity to put the past behind us in a good way and look forward to the future to give our children, the next generation of St. Martiners, a legacy that they can be proud of. That is what our parties and our candidacy stand for. The era, the decade of divisiveness, or as we say in St. Martin, divisiveness, pitching each other, pitching one against each other. St. Martin is too small. Our message is a message of hope. Our message is a message of strength. Our message is a message to tell the people, we will always be there for you. The only way that we can do so is by voting us into Parliament come January 9th, 2020. Mr. Chairman, I started out first time, first president of Parliament, and the task was humongous. It was also at the beginning, at the threshold of a new era, October 2010. And all of us were full of hope. And we started here, we sat here together with the help of staff, and we built this house of inst this institution for the people of St. Martin from scratch. We did it with dignity, 
Yes, there were um, discussions among each other, but at the end of the day, we had one, at the, at, at the beginning, one parliament, one term for four years. The people want us to go back to that, four years. Whoever is elected, and we hope by God that the people of St. Martin feels us, feel the members of the PPA party, feel me, and give us that trust to do the right thing for us all. In 1995, after Hurricane Lewis, I was part of the um, administrative group together with the Lieutenant Governor, Dennis Richardson at the time, that helped build this country, that helped put everyone together and get things done. There were great plans, and a lot of those plans were executed and others were not. But my point is, in those days, in that time, political parties got together. There was a unity march. And my question is, after a devastating, devastating Hurricane Irma, what happened? Why is there so much hatred amongst each other? Why is there so much divisiveness in this beautiful country called St. Martin? So we are here today, and we are asking the people of St. Martin not to stay home, to be able to help move this country forward. We need your help. We need your support. We are able, willing, and capable of bringing stability, prosperity, and abundance to the people of St. Martin. Mr. Chairman, on behalf of the candidates, all of the members here with the support, I want to say to all of you, thank you for being courageous. Thank you for not succumbing to the negativity. We are much better than that. We are much better than that. And we will show during this campaign that we will continue to champion the causes of the people. Food on the table, shelter, and jobs. And those are just, ju those are just the three that are embedded in our Constitution. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for the opportunity. And uh, we look forward to meeting the people face to face on the campaign trail because we, are, we have nothing, nothing to be ashamed of when we face the people of St. Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members of the Maine Voting Bureau. Thank you very much, Ms. Arundel, for your, uh, for your address. As um, the PPA currently, as you indicated, uh, the PPA would require the 136 signatures tomorrow. The opportunity to do so is uh, from 9 until 4 at the uh, government building. And um, in the event, it is that uh, like I indicated before, that we will be examining the list that you have submitted with the documentation. We will be doing that on Monday, and on Tuesday, you will be hearing from us uh, of our findings if everything is in order. If there are any defaults, you will receive the opportunity to remedy those defaults uh, within a period of three days. And if there aren't any defaults, you would also hear from us that there aren't any defaults. At this point, I would like to call Mr. Gums up front in order to receive the proof that he has submitted a list of candidates of 15, cons uh, 15 persons candidates. Welcome the St. Martin Christian Party. And um, I would like to call on the representative and the deputy representative of the Christian Party to the Central Voting Bureau. And those will be Ms. Jacqueline Goudet and Mr. Dylan Smith, if he's here. Either one of you are allowed to submit the list of candidates. You may stand on this side. Good afternoon. Good afternoon.
Thank you very much. Okay. We take note of the fact that the Christian Party, St. Martin Christian Party, submitted a list of candidates of 13 candidates. And we have the instruments for clouding. Good afternoon, St. Martin. Good afternoon to the Central uh, Voting Bureau, all the members, to the members of the St. Martin Christian Party who are here with us, to the press, and to all who are watching or listening and are interested in the future of St. Martin. Uh, the St. Martin Christian Party is a party that was established to bring about good governance in, uh, in St. Martin and also to ensure that the standard in Parliament be raised. And we have endeavored to do that during the past uh, months that we have been in office. And we believe that what we started has not yet been completed. And therefore, we are running again uh, with uh, 13 strong. And we want to be able to give the people of St. Martin and this country uh, proper representation, and especially government that stands by uh, Christian principles, which are universal principles of integrity and honesty, uh, um, values and norms that we all know are the foundation of St. Martin. And this is what we want to bring back to government. So I. I'm hoping and asking the people of St. Martin to give the St. Martin Christian Party um, another opportunity to represent the people uh, with good governance. And uh, I wish all the others who are contesting much success uh, in this election. Thank you very much. Tomorrow is endorsement day. Each party will require 136 um, signatures. However, there is an exception to that. And parties that are exempted from that requirement are parties that have one or more seat currently in Parliament that would have obtained that at the previous election. It is so that the, Christ the St. Martin Christian Party has one seat in Parliament at this moment. As such, you are exempted from that requirement tomorrow. We will be examining the list of candidates with the support and documents that you have submitted to us, and we will do so on Monday, and we will apprise you of our findings on Tuesday. Should there be any defaults that need to be remedied, you will be receiving notification of that, and you will have a period of three days to remedy those defaults. If we have not found any defaults, you would also be notified of such, and um, then you don't have to remedy any defaults. Um, at this point, I would like to ask Ms. Goudette to come forward so that you will receive proof that you would have submitted your list of candidates of 13. to submit your list of candidates. I'm seeing a representative of United Democrats to the Central Voting Bureau. Ms. Gums, if you can stand on this side so the camera can also capture you. Thank you very much, Ms. Gums. And as I see that a United Democrats is submitting a list of 11 candidates and um, just a brief examination of the package. And at this point, we look at uh, the leader of the United Democrats. If you would like to address your constituents or say, Martin, please feel free to do so. Mr. Rogers, it is with much pride that the slate of the United Democrats for the January 9, 2020 election has been presented to your office. The United Democrats, as you might know, came into being following 
the most devastating hurricanes that our country has known in 2017. Thus, the creation of the United Democrats, the manifesto of the United Democrats, the governing program as a result of that manifesto and adjoining with the St. Martin Christian Party was based on the acknowledgement that St. Martin needed firm leadership. St. Martin needed committed leadership and St. Martin needed resolve. As I look at my fellow candidates, some of you have been through the fire, a fire of wanting to execute a program so important to St. Martin and encountering obstacles along the way. I was asked earlier of my role in this process. Mr. Rogers, my role is that stabilizing factor that is needed at this time. Upon learning of the dissolution of parliament and as a direct result, elections for the country of St. Martin, we consider that untimely, but at the same time decided that it was an opportunity for the United Democrats to reinforce that vision, a vision that some might have looked at and wondered what happened along the way, along the way, some persons who no longer could see themselves in a vision of fairness, in a vision of togetherness, in a vision of uni unity, actually left the United Democrats. At that moment, we said this is the opportunity now to reaffirm our commitment to this country. 2020, in our belief, is a turning point for St. Martin, a point when we can look back at 10 years of country status and see how far we've come. But more important than how far we've come, where do we want to go as this country? Where do we want to take the country St. Martin? And so in all, as we would say in Dutch, the race that is taking place, we want that stabilizing factor. A factor that takes everything and everyone into consideration. And so again, Mr. Rogers, I say it is with much pride that our president, Marinka Gums presented you a list of 11 candidates, 10 candidates and myself, because we believe that amongst that list of candidates, you have persons so committed to this country and its future that we can stand here proud today. We can stand here confidently today because we know what our mission is. So again, thank you for receiving our list. And to my fellow members, and fellow candidates, I say, we've done it in the past. And am uh, among some very, very serious odds. And now at this point, when St. Martin needs everyone to step up to the plate, we're going to do it again for this country and the country that we want our children to inherit. Those of you who, like me, have nowhere else to go but here, you know what our task is to ensure that our country is the country we want and we would like to see for our children, my children, my grandchildren, your children, your grandchildren, and generations to come. Not only of the 11 and the members here, but of each and every St. Martiner, each and every person. We don't look at residency. We look at citizenry, being a citizen of this country, and the responsibilities that each and every one of us has for, as a citizen of this beloved country. I love this rock, and as long as God gives me breath and strength, I will continue to fight for St. Martin and its future. So Mr. Rogers, God bless you and the work that you're doing. It's part of our process. Our democratic process might not be the best one. It really never is anywhere, but it's the best we've got, and we've got to work with it. And that process gives us the opportunity on January the 9th, 2020, to say to St. Martin, We've been there. We've done that. We're not through yet. And we will complete the job. That stabilizing factor that today all the things that we stood for, and today you see all political parties are embracing the very, the very fight that we put up, but it's okay because that will contribute to the unity that we so much want to see. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless the country of St. Martin. Thank you. I can note that the United Democrats currently hold one or more seats in Parliament. As such, you do not require to be endorsed tomorrow during the endorsement day. 
We will be examining the lists on Monday with the support and documentations. If so be it that there are defaults, we will actually inform you of such on Tuesday the 26th, and you will have a period of three days to remedy those defaults. In the event we do not find any defaults, we will also inform you of such. Okay? I am handing over here to you the um, proof that you've submitted your list of candidates. Thank you very much. I would like to call on the, I already see the representative of the U.S. Party to the Central Voting Bureau, Mr. Cecil Nicholas. You will be uh, presenting the list of candidates. You may do so at this moment. And I see that the party leader, Mr. Richardson, uh, you feel free to deliver a speech to your constituents and to say, Martin, if you so, can you stand on the side? If you so wish, while we briefly examine the list, you may do so. Today is another day in the history of St. Martin. Another year, another election. USP started in 2014. We started as a young political party with a vision and a mission for the people of this country. We continue to be proud servers of this country. When we started in 2014, we believe that the people of this country should always be first. For many years, we have observed how this country has been governed, how things have went. We continue to fight in this same hall that I stand in today as leader and as a member of parliament. I am proud to serve the people of St. Martin in the capacity now and from the past as leader of USP. We believe there's a lot of work to be done for this country. We believe that we must come together and unite to put St. Martin first. We have seen a lot of issues in the past that has really, how would you call it, make some strange changes in this country. I am saying to all of us, the people, you must come out and vote. You must come out and give that mandate to the USP political party. While, yes, we went through trials and tribulations when it comes to a young political party, that would make us what we are today, a strong, together political party yeah. that continue to fight for all of us, not a selected few. We are not fighting for a selected few. We are fighting for all. From since 2014, US, we have always looked and made sure that young people in this community have come first where opportunities is concerned. But it ain't gonna stop us, no matter what. We will continue to, fork, to move forward with our 19 candidates yeah. that we have on this list. Yeah. Each candidate is ready and willing to support on the issues that is ahead of us. While yes, we support the interim government with some mandate that was brought in front of us we will continue to make sure that those things is executed on a timely basis. But it cannot be at the pressures of those who feel that legislation must fly through this legislative hall at their will. It cannot. 
That is not the St. Martin we want. We want to be able to sit in here and debate and deal with legislation that needs international support. But it can't come at all costs to the detriment of these people. Yeah. We have seen what the banks are doing to all of us in this country. Banks come, they sell, they go, they came, and nothing changed. And if we don't legislate in here to bring changes to what is happening to our people, our people will continue to perish with all what is going on. And I'm standing here in this next four years that my voice will be louder, stronger, with this team behind of me to stop the wrong that is taking place. Too many of us sit down and allow it to happen. We work hard as St. Martiners. We develop ourselves. And today when we look and see what is happening, they are destroying all of us as young business people for selfish reasons. So I'm saying proud as leader of this political party with all of us who are here. We're going to continue with the development of the airport. We're going to continue with the infrastructure development. We're going to continue to fix the houses, but more so we're going to fix the sports tourism. Because today we came up front street with one of those racing cars in front of us to show the people. The vision that I had many years ago is the vision today that still is yawning for that support in this country called Samantha. We must develop for our people. So today, I want to thank all of those 19 candidates and their family and their supporters for supporting USP. I am proud to lead this party again. While I gave young people the opportunity to lead, they decide to jump for greener pastures. But nevertheless, I stand here proud and strong to defend our people, the people of this country, not for greener pastures, not for brighter things, but for the things that I believe that these people of this country deserve. Yeah. Yeah. Good representation right. and a steadfast yeah. course for countries in Martin to be one to become independent from all what is yeah. happening yeah. in this country. It is so that the U.S. party has one or more political, uh, one or more seats currently in parliament as such, the requirement to be endorsed tomorrow is not necessary for the U.S. Party. We will be perusing the list, the list of candidates with the support and documentations. We will be doing so on Monday. We will also notify you of such on Tuesday, immediately the day after. And if there are any defaults, we will ask you to remedy those defaults within a period of three days. If there are no defaults, you would also receive notification from us the very following day as well. now arrive to the end of postulation day. As I indicated this morning, as per Article 22 of the Election Ordinance, all registered political parties at the Electoral Council are allowed to submit your list of candidates to the Central Voting Bureau on postulation day between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. As you've been able to see, seven political parties have submitted your list of candidates to us and they have even addressed their constituencies in St. Martin in general. And um, based on the seven political parties, I can inform you they are the, um, the PFP, the Party for Progress, submitted a list of eight candidates. Then we had the National Alliance submitted a list of 23 candidates. Then we had the uh, St. Martin Christian Party submitted a list of 13 candidates. We have the United People's Party submitted a list of 23 candidates. We had a PPA submitted a list of 15 candidates. The United Democrats submitted a list of 11 candidates. And the US Party submitted a list of 19 candidates. In total, those are 112 candidates. As indicated before, we will be examining the list of candidates 
that examination will take place on Monday and we will inform the political parties of our findings of the examinations. If there are any defaults, we will inform them of such on Tuesday the 26th and they will have a period of three days in order to remedy those defaults. Now, once we have rem uh, examined the list and we have provided parties to remedy the defaults, if so be the case, we will have a public meeting on December 2nd in order to decide on the validity of the list. And once those, uh, once a decision is taken by the Central Voting Bureau, then those are the list with the candidates that will be placed on the ballot and will be allowed to contend the January 9th, 2020 election. Once again, I would like to thank everyone for listening. I would like to thank my colleagues from right, Mr. Anastasio Baker, Tamara Richardson, Mercedes James, and Cindy Marica. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much, St. Martin, for listening. Have a great afternoon.